Hello, I'm Jin Dong Tsai, the director of US China Music Institute at Bard College Conservatory of Music. The mission of the US China Music Institute is to promote music from contemporary China in the West. We do it through our annual China Now Music Festival, as well as our academic conferences and our degree programs at the Bard Conservatory of Music. We are also bringing new content through our social media platforms, including performances and discussions on Chinese music. Today, it is my great pleasure to introduce a discussion between Professor Bob Martin and P. Power Chioso Uman. Bob is a funding director of the Bard Conservatory of Music and together we find the US China Music Institute. Wu Man is most well-known pipa player in the West and she is a faculty member of the US China Music Institute. They will be discussing about the history of the pipa as well as Wu Man's experience in her wonderful musical career. Please enjoy the conversation. Cool. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> so this is such a nice chance to uh, get to see you. Uh, it's yeah. Been, uh, more than a year, I realize, since I saw you, yeah. Yeah, I, that was last year. Berlin a year, goes yeah. fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought we would, uh, I want to speak maybe first about the, the instrument, about the pipa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, then about you, uh, but we start with the pipa because it's very, very old. <laughs> so, right, right. And also, you just let me know when you wanted to hear it to play, or you know, just yes, let me know yes. when we talk about and just show something. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we just? I, I want to ask you uh, about something about the history of the instrument. I know it's very uh, old, and if uh -huh. you could say something about, you know, when when it was first played? Okay. Um, so the pipa was the first played in China <laughs> um, more than 3,000 years ago. So before, actually before Tang Dynasty, which is 618 AD that year, wow. yeah, before yeah. that, yeah. and it was introduced to China um, from Central Asia. And uh, so that was the first time this type of pipa already existed in China. So there was an earlier f uh, form, an earlier version of the instrument in, uh, in, in Yeah, Asia. so this is what we call kind of like a Central Asian version of a pipa or, ah, or, ah. or say a Persian, ah, uh, a Persian. So originally this kind of a, a version from a, from a Persian. So before that, Chinese in Han Dynasty, even earlier, a few centuries earlier than Tang Dynasty, um, uh, Chinese already have a kind of a plucking instrument. Mm -hmm. So very much like today's Ruan, oh. we already have in, in mm -hmm. school, right? We, we have, or Sanxian, like a mm -hmm. Japanese Samishian, we call Sanxian. Right. So this right. type of like a round, little small round body and a very straight neck, mm -hmm. long neck, and then play like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but that very simple. So before this pear-shaped pipa existed in China, that kind of plucking instrument already already in China, you know, right. Chinese right. developed. Um, so that name all called pipa, you know, mm -hmm. all the string plucking instrument we call pipa. Does That's pipa it mean, is. does it have some meaning? Uh, pipa doesn't have any meaning. Oh, pipa, okay. it's like a plucking uh, motion okay. oh, hands, yeah. sort yeah. of. That's the way we know from a history book. Maybe this is a good moment just at least to pick up the instrument so <laughs> that people watching this can see what it sure. looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Later so, we'll hear it also. Well, yeah. Well, here we are. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we, we, we talked about, I'm kind of going to go a little bit. Uh, you know, this is like pear shaped, right? Yeah, it's a pear yeah. shaped. Yeah, yeah. The oh, beautiful, beautiful yeah. piece, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a quite a big actually right now. And you know, you see the head, kind of yeah. a four strings design. Um, this here, this version, it came from Central Asia. Uh -huh. 
And yeah. uh, did it become larger? Earlier versions were smaller? Smaller. Early version, much smaller. Uh, smaller, because to make bigger sound, I guess. And uh, yeah. Earlier, yes. And, and this, it's a very much a 19th century version. Ah, interesting. Yeah. interesting. Even later, early 20th century. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you mean this, the model, the actual dimensions, or uh, the instrument itself, of course, is, is more recent, but the model right. was 19th century? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the structure is the same, you know, always a pear shaped. If you have a chance to go to Metropolitan Museum, they have a 16th century pipa. Ah, interesting. So you, you can compare right, the right. Ming Dynasty pipa, um, much smaller. Uh, and but also, also four, four strings. strings. Four yes, strings. four strings. And the tuning was the same? We don't know. Oh, right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure not the same. Ah, no. interesting. Yeah, I'm sure not the same. Interesting. Um, so until the Qing Dynasty, later 19th century, so this type developed very much so. But even the frets, much less. The frets only like, like right here. The bottom frets, it's... it's not it wasn't existed oh. during Qing dynasty uh -huh. and the, on the top we have six yeah. six frets right now in the older days we only have four frets uh -huh. and then maybe five six eight right here that's it that's yeah. it no more and were uh, these changes introduced sort of gradually you know gradually adding, yeah yeah adding adding later um early 19th century we added a little more and uh 80s, 90s, 70s, <laughs> mm. uh, until 2000, right here. Wow. This is the last last fret that, which is I know I started to play this, you know, seven later 70s. Yeah, and uh, so pretty much it developed this way. But I just noticed last few years I went back to China yeah. and I saw there's two more frets bottom. They add it. So you see. see. <laughs> so, so that means that there are quite a few makers and they, yeah. And, uh, are, but this is now basically in China or are the, does the pipa exist in other Asian countries? Um, in modern times. We were talking about the Tang Dynasty, which yep. is 2000 years ago. Yeah. Actually, there's only Tang Dynasty pipa in Japan right now. Oh, interesting. The original. The original pipa oh. um, was introduced to Japan, and I think it was a gift to Japanese emperor uh, during Tang Dynasty that time. Oh, so they kept Japanese kept that in Narnia Museum. In Narnia. What about players? Uh, Did they develop uh, a whole group of players in Japan? Uh, but not that particular pipa. Japanese they have a biwa. It's the same thing, oh. but they have their own kind of little bit difference, own version. Oh, of course, the musically very different. Oh. And also in mm -hmm. uh, in Vietnam, they also have pipa, oh. and they pluck, use plectrum, very simple way. But it's and, similar. Uh, the basic, similar. It's yeah. a same yeah. basic, same yeah. same design, same. Yeah. Pear shape Image. and pear yeah. shape or the frets. Yeah. But during years, they all develop more and more and very much close to Chinese pipa. Uh -huh. And also, actually, in Korea, they also have pipa. Mm -hmm. um, it was fade away for a long time, but now they kind of come, wanted to come back to bring back to that. So basically, in this whole area in, in, the, in the East Asia, very much a similar instrument exists. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, maybe uh, before, maybe you would play a bit so uh, we can hear the sound and hear you, and then that will lead to my questions <laughs> about you. Oh, that's beautiful and tantalizing. It's it, just a taste, just a, yes. <laughs> a little taste, yeah. 
So, but of course, it makes me wonder, when did you first encounter the instrument? When did you, what attracted you to it? When did you first begin to play? Um, I started to play the pipa when I was 12. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was quite late. <laughs> For uh -huh. a lot of kids, they, you know, they start at six or five uh, years yeah. old. Uh, yeah. um, but I was started another traditional plucking instrument uh, when I was uh, nine years old. Uh -huh. So, and then after that, I picked up the pipa when I was 12. Did your did your family have, um, was it in school or in, at home? How did you? Um, uh, it was home um, by a private teacher. Um, my family is not, a, there's no one, uh, my parents, they're not music, musicians. Right. So right. Um, um, it, it just uh, kind of, to me, it's, I love the shape yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. very much. Yeah. And I love the sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, also a lot of older paintings and poetry talk about this instrument. Yes, yes. Um, but also very challenging is uh, when I first hear this instrument was traumatic piece. So it was very uh, like virtuoso piece. That also attracted me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it really has two different, so many different characters. I know. Yeah, there, yeah. I remember the, uh, hearing some, even military, some uh, inspirational. Uh, Military right. sounding, yeah, and then of right. course the most delicate and poetic, yeah. right? So that that's how the beautiful instrument attracted me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and then you actually um, began in the music school to do it in the yeah. Uh, was that Beijing in Beijing? Yeah, I went to Beijing when I was thirteen. Uh -huh. And uh, to start uh, my sort of like a music career, right. and went to music school, conserva Central Conservatory. Right. right. Um, and that when I w was middle school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how I started. So the thing you know that's so striking to to me about about your career is that, I mean, I think it's true. I think it's definitely true that you are probably the only really internationally famous player of a Chinese instrument and you've managed to take it, you know, all over the world in Europe and in South America and all through the United States. And, you know, I wonder if you can just, I mean, I, it's a big long story, but yeah, what, 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 I mean, how did that work? Did you have the idea early on that you wanted to share the, uh, the beauty of the instrument? Well, um, yeah, actually, a lot of people ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's a simple way to um, to say to say why 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 I want to do that or why I've been you know doing all those crazy <laughs> crazy things. <laughs> I think it's curiosity. The curiosity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my personality of curiosity uh that's the one thing but also um I, you know i also been fascinated by how uh how many types of music uh existing existed on this earth mm. and how little i know so when i heard many different type of music doesn't matter west or east or you know south or, right, <laughs> or north, north. Right. yeah uh, it just it just immediately grabbed me i said wow i never heard about this music it's so fascinating i wanted to know i wanted to learn i wanted to know deeper how can i do this can i can i you know can we work Try, together yeah, yeah. yeah can i try uh, so that's how i've been kind of open-minded about well, that word mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably um but that's how i think that that's probably the basic yeah. <laughs> what would yeah. be what would be some early examples where you heard something that was new to you and you were so interested well early early time i work with the composers when mm. i was in the school mm. and uh, you know we've been always play the pieces, all the pieces, traditional in uh, uh, from the 19th century. The the pipa book. There's 13 pieces. There are 20 pieces. That's that's 
you know, that's how we gonna how we learn this instrument. And the first time I worked with the composition department, a composer, mm. and the write a new piece. That's also fascinating to me. Uh, how can you, you know, how can you write a piece? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Where yeah. the music come from? Right, right. You know, that's for for like a teenager. You know, like yeah. wow, that's amazing because yeah. this, this instrument is old. How can I play something very new? Just yeah, the people, yeah. the friends I know, they wrote yeah. it for me. So right, that's right. yeah, and yeah. kind of that curiosity again. Yeah. But that <laughs> uh, take that doesn't take you to. Uh, to bluegrass, for example, or, you know, <laughs> I mean, where, where did, what were the early chan uh, opportunities or experiences that, well, that yeah. were really, you know, quite different from, from. When I, when I first time came here in the, in the States, United States, um, 30 years ago, uh, I first time invited by Kono's Quartet. Mm, yes. And, uh, <clears throat> And I heard um, they played Peace of Africa. Ah, oh, yes, yes. And uh, mm. it, it was, I was really blown me away because the string quartet is a very Western classical form, right? right. Chamber music, string quartet. Right. It's it, it just like my, instru my instrument. It's a Chinese classical yes, instrument. Yes, yes, yes. And how come they play African? Uh, yeah, yeah, good. And the, yeah. and the sound of just fascinating, sound great. Yeah. And they also use the African instrument, traditional instrument, they blend it together. So that's first time I heard that kind of music, African music, uh, and then Mexican music, mm -hmm. and bluegrass mm -hmm. and all. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, that's yeah. actually my turning point. I said, well, yeah, why not? Yeah. I can try. And, and also many people said, oh, people sound like a banjo. Mm -hmm. Oh, so then you want to know, <laughs> yeah, a banjo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. It's, if you're looking for the roots of the instrument, it actually came from Central Asia. But now that you say it, I, I think it immediately suggests the importance of improvising, because if you always needed, you know, if you say, well, mm -hmm you know, give me the music or so, you know, then it couldn't happen the way it did, right? I mean, you obviously were able to, to, to join, to improvise. Is that right? Yeah, that also uh, took me uh, quite a while. Um, to, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it, it yeah, that's that. Was there very good at something you learned on, by yourself or was there some way that, yeah, uh, by yourself, yeah. Actually, very good question. <laughs> Um, for my experience, I learned by myself, mm. but I knew all the days Chinese music, it's based on improvise. Uh -huh. In the history, and yeah. my, yes, my old teacher and a lot of a folk musician, they still do improvise even today. Um, but because the younger generation right now we everything is essential conservatory everything is conservatorialized yeah yeah and we're training in the in a very very uh, western way mm. and uh, we lost lost the improvisation sort of that elements and for mostly younger player mm. younger musician including myself so actually that's we rediscovery the improvisation part is i've been working with the musicians from africa from you know from uh, aboriginal and yeah, bluegrass right yeah. so that's how people always ask me uh, including central asian musicians i work with them they also say do you are you guys not improv in what about chinese music mm. what about chinese folk music so the answer yeah. is that it was it was yes. improvised, <laughs> yes. but but in a certain way that tradition was lost, and yeah, uh, yeah. Now you are helping to bring it back, but I I would think it's there must be different kinds even of improvisation because for example in uh, jazz or bluegrass there is a harmonic uh, element right, um, 
whereas I guess it's very different in Arabic and uh, uh, mm -hmm. Central Asian. The, I mean, at least you're, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, you're, it's out of my depth, but I think it's extremely <laughs> interesting because without that, you couldn't really have made the connections you made. Right. Uh, so let me just bring bring my yeah, guitar. Please. And you can yeah. you can you can hear the yeah. the some some example. Good. Uh, good. So my hometown in Hangzhou near Shanghai area, and we have the folk music form we call silk and bamboo music. Mm -hmm. Si Zhu Yin Yue, that's in Chinese. Mm -hmm. So basically, basically it's tea house music. People drink tea in the old days, they just play music very much like a jazz in yeah, some yeah. way. Uh, I see. Uh -huh. Yeah, it starts slow and go faster, 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 and mm -hmm. everyone play unison. Same, same, same oh, melody. Oh. Same melody. Uh, you know, in Chinese, we're not based on chord, we're based on melody, like right. Indian music. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if everyone takes differently because of the based on their instrument, like, that's right. kind of right. like, uh, That's a basic melody. Mm -hmm. And then we play unison, but how are we going to improvise? Right. We just add it. Each instrument, they add to their own style. Sure. So you see, that's the, the, the ornamentation. Ornamentation, like in Bach. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Right, right. So, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's wonderful, so, yeah. Yeah, and the flute, the beats the flute will, will be always above the top, mm -hmm. very high, you know, so then a lot of people busy. <laughs> right, right. And right. then the people also, also added to the, the ornamentation. Right. Earth will also added. So, that's the improvisation in mm -hmm. Chinese mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you join, let's say, well, I know one of the early associations was with the Silk Road Ensemble. Is that, is that right? That you worked yeah. with them? And now was that a, did that require a different kind of improvisation or were you able just to extend? Um, yeah, the well, improvisation, <laughs> the basic idea is the same. Yes, it, it kind of extended, like mm -hmm. say if we have music from uh, Africa or from uh, Central Asia, so how are you going to improvise with that melody, mm -hmm. uh, with but that you, skill? But start also there with a melody in African music? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or rhythm, or, you know, depends on what, it, what, it, what the role you're right. in this piece. Right, right, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So, so much must be also the personal, the interpersonal part, I imagine, really. And I've seen you do that. You know, it's really a matter of just connecting with other people and, and building confidence and listening. And uh, yeah, it's really... Uh, I want to go back to something you mentioned about in the very beginning of playing music by, by com a newly written music, music by <laughs> your contemporaries. And that's another thing you've developed over these years. I guess one of the last times I saw you about a year and a half ago was when you did the a concerto for pipa, a double concerto pipa and cello with Yo-Yo Ma in Carnegie Hall. And there have been a lot of that. And um, so that's really interesting. And I wanted to ask you, are the composers who combine the Western and Chinese instruments mostly Chinese composers? Or are you finding that composers also who are not Chinese are using Chinese instruments? And do you see, is that developing well? That's a really, for me, that's one of the most important aspects of, uh, of adding to the rich, I mean, adding to Western music is the inclusion of the 
sounds and the ideas of Chinese music? I'm sorry, that was two or three questions, but uh, maybe you can answer whatever part. I'm going to try to. <laughs> um, that all through those years, um, definitely developed uh, both Chinese and non-Chinese composer, mm. uh, right, for uh, combine uh, different Chinese traditional instrument with with the Western orchestra, or we call concerto or right. chamber music, is sort of that kind of a format. Right. Uh, definitely, uh, especially um, in the conservatory, sort of that that uh, academia area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's there are many my experience like Terry Riley, American composer. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lou, Lou Harrison, right. um, and uh, Philip Glass. Yes. Uh, they all write me with a for me in pipa with a, either a string quartet or chamber or or concerto orchestra. So you had to show them, I guess, what what the instrument could do. Yeah, and. Uh... Probably, yeah. yeah, because yeah. Uh, yeah, the 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 whole process I always involved quite a lot. Um, it's a funny thing. It's actually not only um, a non-Chinese composer uh, needed to sort of learn uh, the instrument, but also including Chinese composers sure, as well. Sure. Um, they needed to learn because mm -hmm. so it's a different when you you know when you write for cello, when you write for violin that or or flute, that's different, right? Yeah, so you needed yeah. to you needed to know that the the language of the instrument. Um, and, that, and was yes. the and the notation? Did they use? Did you work out a, a a different kind of notation, or was it looking like harp or I don't know guitar or some? Um, in in they all write in Western notation, yeah. just like a harp or guitar or, or piano. Yeah. Um, but in Chinese traditional music, we have our own uh, traditional notation. Yes. Uh, which is which is very different than Western notation. Is anyone using it in new work now, or pretty much not? The uh, ch Chinese Chinese and older notation also developed in a different stages. And right now we use a number system. It's a very popular, still use like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. Yeah. So like do re mi fa sol la ti. Yeah. We still yeah. use it every day. A lot of people they don't do actually. They don't read Western notation. They oh, only yeah. read in Chinese notation. And so you use the numbers, and then for rhythm, is it also yes. notated a different way? Yeah. Yes, but we also we also adopt the Western Western sort of rhythm thing, you know, two lines, yeah, and, you know, eight notes, uh, and half notes. We yeah, use that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have the feeling that? Um, I'm not sure. I, let me see if I can ask this. Are the two musical languages really coming together, or or blending, or is it sort of writing? I mean, I could imagine, I've heard some pieces that are sort of Western, they sound very Western, but you add a arhu or pipa or something. Mm -hmm. but, but then I wonder if there is also, you know, connecting the musical languages of Chinese music with Western music. That's actually a very, um, very good point. Um, that's also depending on each composer sure, themselves. Yeah. Uh, each ability <laughs> yeah. on how they understanding uh, not only the instrument but also how they understand the Chinese music uh, mm. if they want to but uh, you know each each composer they have their own sort of style like for example Lou, uh, Lou Harrison he's he's he he's pipa and with a western orchestra uh, western string uh, orchestra um, piece it doesn't sound Chinese at all mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound uh, 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 classical Western music at all. Either. No, it's no, Lou I'm Harrison, not. right. It's right. Lou Harrison. Right, so that's, right. yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah, yeah that's enough. the point. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the point. But um, when he gave to me um, uh, the, the pipa score, I look at it, just the, all the notes. There's nothing fingering or nothing uh, like a pipa notation. Mm. You know, how mm. you gonna, are you going to do tremolo? Are you going to do bending the notes? Oh. That's nothing there. It's, there's ornamentation. It's not. So not he leaves there. that to you. 
Yes. Ah, yeah. So, so that's actually for new pieces. Doesn't matter you're a Chinese or non-Chinese composer. It's all based on the player, the soloist, how they put their own language. Oh, I see. In in the in the piece. So that's so Lou, yeah yeah. Please Lou go ahead. To me. Yeah, Lou gave to me. Lou said it's all yours. Made it, let please make sound like the people. Ah, I yeah. said okay. Um, I played every time. I play differently. Ah. That's also improvised. So this is really. <laughs> I was just thinking of the difference. So, you know, Bartok was so fascinated by the folk music that he heard when he made tri field trips into the mountains and he recorded and he built it, he used it. It became part of his musical language, but he didn't have, it, it, that's different. He listened and came back and then wrote and tried to incorporate these composers they have you. <laughs> they don't just listen and get some ideas. They say, yeah. so it's a different recipe and it's a very rich opportunity. It, it, yeah. yeah, I also, I would say in the future, maybe 22 century or 23 century, <laughs> composer and the, and the performer will combine together. Uh. The way I, that's 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 what I, we're gonna come back to the old days to the 19th century. You see, Chopin, he's pianist, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. you know Paganini also violinist. Yeah, yeah. A lot of example as a Western classical music composer, yeah. they all they're they all musicians. They all play instrument. Mozart, yeah. great yeah. pianist. Beethoven, yeah, yeah. Beethoven, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. I don't know. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's really interesting. And then the music yeah. styles start to. That's a separate point, I guess. But uh, mm -hmm. I've been so impressed, you know, in as we worked on with the U.S. China Music Institute, the idea that young composers grow up hearing everything and now having the, the instruments to write for and the players. So their language becomes kind of so broad, so big, you know, they, uh, because the, with technology and they hear mm -hmm. everything. And um, if there are players around who are interested and bright and ambitious, then we have something really great to look forward to. Yeah. Um, there was a question that I wanted to ask you that since I mentioned, um, our U.S. China Music Institute in Bard Conservatory. Of course, the overall purpose is to try to to aid in the development of Chinese music in the West, have, see a development, see more appreciation, more understanding. And I just wonder what your thoughts are and what suggestions you have for doing that successfully. Wow, that's a bigger question. <laughs> Um, I think most important is introducing, uh, to, to know each other. I mean, it sound like, you know, sound like, <laughs> but that's true. So mm. I think it's to really deeply understanding, uh, the culture for, for Chinese students to play the traditional instrument, they need to understand it themselves, their <laughs> instrument like my pipa, they, if they play pipa, they need to know deeper to understand the culture of pipa, the mm -hmm. language of pipa, and that they could introduce to others. And also, you know, other could learn, basically learn from each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it comes down to uh, the human connection, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, that's, I think that's probably the most important. I, I feel like don't have to push. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, don't. Uh, it's a it's a natural process. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. If if you present the best or you touch the people, they think we, they heard the Chinese music. Say, wow, that's really deep. I really appreciate. It. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to know yeah. more. Yeah. Or yeah. for or you know the other way around. Yeah. I heard something. 
you, you know, jazz or bluegrass or or folk tunes or someone wrote a new piece with a with a Western instrument. And I really kind of blow me away, like I heard the mm -hmm. Phonos Quartet. Mm -hmm. um, that's also deeper we can sure. understand. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we can talk, let's let's try something together. Let's create something right. together. Right, make music and together. Make music together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the new language. Let's find a new way. Right, right, uh, right, right. Yeah. That's great. That's, so I want to end with two things. One is just to ask you if there's anything that I, that I should have asked you or that you wanted <laughs> to. Yeah, anything that was, anything that you think of that, that we should have um, spoken about. Yeah, we we basically a lot. But you you mentioned the the the, the re, you know religion you know music of purpose, but that's okay. We don't we don't have. Oh to yeah, that. I had. <laughs> well, I wonder. It, you know, if I guess my thought was that in every culture, music is important. But the role it plays, it plays so many roles, you know, mm -hmm. in, in different cultures, from religion to uh, in warfare, in for work, <laughs> helping people work. For them. Um, and then, of course, we talk about the kind of art music uh, for contemplation. Anyway, I maybe it's uh, too broad a question, but I wondered if there was, if you think there's something characteristic about the role that Chinese music plays in Chinese culture? It's, it's also, yeah, it's also broad uh, question to me because uh, the Chinese music have a different stage, different time period, mm. uh, different dynasty, like early years in Tang dynasty served in the court for, for emperor <laughs> and the pipa was only company music uh, company instruments uh -huh. not not solo uh, but a lot of chinese music basically i think all the arts you know including music and culture it's a based on religion religion yeah. uh, re religion, yeah. Uh, religion. Yeah. Yeah. um chinese the buddhism and the Taoism, and a lot of pipa um music or qing and qing the scissor mm -hmm. uh, it, but all based on even a lot of wind instrument in China, the wind music, it's all based on the religion. When you say based uh, on religion, do you mean used as part used, of religious used, ceremony? Yes, oh. yes, used as part of the ceremony. It's it's a belongs to uh, the religious yes, tradition. Religious. Yeah. And if you look at all the older people pieces, it's all Buddhism piece. Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So I said there were two things. The last, I thought perhaps we end with hearing music. a little more music. Yes, I wish I could join, but I, <laughs> maybe you play one more piece and then we'll, okay. we'll be the end. And I want to thank you because uh, we'll go out with music, but I want to thank you so yeah. much for, for doing this and for all that you've done for, for music. Thank you. Uh, since we were um, talking about the, the Chinese music, um, belongs to, or, you know, it, or even every culture belongs to somewhere in the elements. So I mentioned the, the Buddhism piece mm -hmm. in Pipa. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play this short Pipa, older piece from a 19th century, uh, a book, <laughs> Pipa mm -hmm. collection, mm -hmm. and it's called Buddhist Chanting. Buddhist Chanting. Okay. Yeah, Buddhist Good. Chanting. <laughs> 